Hey everybody, welcome back to Tucson Eggers. Man, I am just hammering out these pre-winter heating system checklist items. Uh, I already got the wood burning stove chimney swept out in the house. Just uh, about an hour ago, I finished up re replacing a Taco 007 circulator pump for the LP boiler system in the house, which is what the wood boiler is plumbed into. So, and uh, now I'm getting ready to go ahead and do a annual service on the Woodmaster itself. Uh, got a little uh, rain coming through here. It should be gone in a few minutes. So I figured I'd go ahead and get started, show you guys the kit that I bought. Uh, this kit's kind of pricey because it comes with two gallons of the uh, alternative heating supply stuff. I'll show you in a second, but I got, uh, was it 18 feet of one inch door rope, some black goop. We got three of these little flapper valves for the fans. And then, uh, Two gallons of this Protec 300 additive helps keep, uh, you know, the, well, let's just read it here. Let's see here. Formulated to prevent rust and scale, safe for stainless and mild steel, regulates and balances pH, protects copper and brass, dramatically reduces sludge and mineral deposits, contains three levels of protection, up to two years protection, test kit sold separately, best oxygen control in the business, better for units with frequent water refills, blah, blah, blah. So my unit out there holds just a frog hair under 500 gallons. It's like 493 or 497, something like that. One of these is good for up to 300 gallons. And uh, that, this alternative heating supplies, they actually sell this kit that has two of these for that Woodmaster 6500. I gotta get that. Now that only takes one and a half of these gallons. So after one year, I go ahead and put the other half in. Now, backtracking just a little bit, uh, I, inst I started using that wood boiler three winters ago. So it's got two full winters and about three quarters of a winter of use on it. This past, uh, past fall, so almost a year ago right now, I double checked everything, everything looked good and uh, I just ran it, okay? I checked the water and everything, everything looked good, seemed good. Uh, so this time I'm gonna go ahead and I didn't even check the flapper valves, uh, damper valves. So I'll check those this time. I can't imagine they're bad. Honestly, I probably don't even need to replace the door seal, but I'm probably gonna anyway. Um, draining it is gonna take a little while, but I got a mag filter on the back of it as well. So we'll, t uh, we'll take a look at that thing. While we're draining it, we'll check out the, uh, the flapper valves. I'll go ahead and swap out the door seals. And then it's just a matter of refilling it. So let's get after it. This kit here cost uh, just a hair under 200 bucks. Uh, most kits are only like 100, 150 bucks, depending on the size of your boiler. All right, so I don't have all day to wait on the rain. Got a little break in it. I went ahead and uh, popped all the covers off of the fans and these dampeners and the old dampeners look just fine a little bit of crud in there but uh yeah i've had issues with the the spring coming loose before like that right there it kind of slides out every now and then but uh the valve the flapper itself looks great on all of them and i also went ahead and uh popped that valve open to let her start draining out for about the first i don't know three seconds there was some kind of cruddy looking stuff but now all looks clear probably down to the last quarter of it. This flapper valve way up in here looks pretty good too. So next I'm gonna go ahead and get this mag filter opened up and cleaned out. And that pink stuff you see on there is just remnants from the uh, additive. So let's see what this looks like here. A little bit of brown. Not too bad. And this piece comes out. Oh, there it goes. Huh. So that's our mag filter. You can see we definitely got some, some sludge on there, which is normal. It's not a huge issue. The filter down here, it's got some crud in it, but it isn't too bad. Water can obviously still pass through there, no problem. But we'll get her all rinsed out and uh, get this thing cleaned off. All right, so that cleaned up real nice. Just a little spritz with the hose. And this one did too. Nice and clean now. Boy, do I feel stupid. I was just putting all this stuff back together and uh, 
went to give this thing a little wiggle and it popped right loose. Not that we need it now, but we'll go ahead and give it a little bit better of a wipe down. All right, she's ready for install. As you can see, we're done draining here. So as soon as this filter's back on, I am gonna take you all back down to the boiler room in the house, utility room, and get that thing, uh, get my hose started. Just a little tweak. Doesn't need to be super snug. Okay, everything looks good now. And close this, turn the valves on and start filling her. All right, so in case you didn't see it before on one of my other videos, this is how I fill my boiler. Well, washing machine line, boiler drain valve, cold return, heading straight back to the boiler. So here's something you kind of got to be aware of. I'm not too worried about them. I'm not allergic or nothing, but uh, got a little hornet's nest there. This one's got a couple. And uh, they were sitting right there. There's still one sitting there. There's probably six or eight of them when I took that cover off. I want to get them out of there. And honestly, there's probably nothing in them, so... Oop, one guy in there. He doesn't look too happy. Sorry, bud. Just get in there and knock it loose. There we go. Done. He's like, you took my home. That looks like a juvenile. Anywho, just something to keep an eye out for. All right, so it's only been a couple minutes since I uh, let the water start coming back in and uh, I wanna make sure that it's cleaned out a little bit. So I'm gonna take my woody here, stick it in the hole and see if I can't get something to spit out. See a little bit of crud. I might do that a few more times too. That'll probably clear up really quick. I'll let a little more pressure build up in there and we'll do it again. So I'm really debating right now whether or not to change out this door seal. I know it doesn't absolutely need it. What are you doing? Get out of here. Go on. But I was having a little bit of a tough time getting the doors to open and close properly before I shut it down last year. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do it. They're bad enough. All right, scrapers of choice here. I like the old paint scraper myself. Well, the, the heavy duty slanted, that guy right there. But uh, a couple years ago, actually it was the, the summer after my first season running this thing, I actually jumped in there, all monkey suited up, respirator and everything. And I made this scraper out of a hatchet and some John Deere push rod or something, I don't know. And uh, this worked really, really good for getting the bulk of what was inside of there. Because all I'm looking to do is get the area around the, the rope cleaned up. I don't care about the rest of this crap. He's in this dude. I'm gonna go grab myself a little dust mask. It really helps with that rope too. It's loosening it up. Yeah, that rope is pretty, uh, pretty toast. Probably a good idea to swap it out. There we go. Yeah, that thing's pretty, pretty fried. It's three years. Damn, it just broke on me. Yeah, it's... I'd say it's due. Man, I really thought I had a three quarter inch scraper. I don't. Fortunately, this does not have to be perfect. This part probably isn't really all that necessary, but anything worth doing is worth uh, doing right or overdoing. That's it, overdo.
So apparently I stopped the camera when I started putting in the door seals and started the camera when I was completed, which is why we're staring at the completed doors. Anyway, it's not very complicated. I just put a little bead, a very thin bead of the black high temp RTV in the back edge of the, the door seal channel and then feed the line in there. Just don't stretch out the line. Let it be kind of thick and bushy when you're pushing it into the channel. I still had almost two feet left over when I was done. So plenty of rope there to do the whole thing. So before it gets completely full, let's pop this bugger back open. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, not bad. Very, very little's coming out. I'm gonna go shut this off so we can add our secret sauce first. All right, on to uh, almost a last step. One of these gallons is for 300, so we'll call it a gallon and three quarter to properly treat this tank. And I could put the rest in, it wouldn't hurt it, but I put like one and three quarter gallon in there. And then uh, I'll dump this, the rest of this one in either next summer or the following summer, depending on what the water looks like. Okay, so you really got two options at this point. You can either Go ahead and fill the tank and then turn the circulating pumps on or circulator pumps on or you can turn the circulator pumps on let it go for i don't know 12 24 hours whatever because you really want that protect boiler uh, protection stuff to get really mixed into the whole system so because i don't feel like waiting till tomorrow i'm gonna i have a, a helper outside right now who's gonna let me know when the boiler is overflowing from that standpipe. All right, let me know when it starts coming out. Uh, sh shut it off. All right, she is full. Thank you, dear. All right, so, checked all of our flapper valves. Cleaned out our mag filter. We double checked that there was not a whole lot of sludge in the bottom. Circulator pumps are running again. We know it's full now. So I think we're basically done. I got to get this back cover on here, which I had to make this one. So it doesn't fit quite as precise as the factory one. Yep, we got power, everything's working. So uh, that'll do it for this video. As far as the boiler goes, everything's buttoned up. We got our new seal. The flaps didn't, the dampener flaps didn't need to be changed out. She's full, she's got new treatment, new water. Uh, everything I think is ready for winter time. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't come too soon. It's only like the 20, 20th of September, 2024 right now. And uh, honestly, it's like 75 out right now. It's kind of muggy. Just saw the rain earlier. So I appreciate everybody stopping by. If you got any questions about the, the boiler system stuff or uh, firewood stuff, um, I got links down in the description for that stuff as well. I've got a whole playlist dedicated to uh, firewood and boiler and the stove, the, the regular wood burning stove. Uh, please check them out. If you got any suggestions for me or the channel, please throw that down in the comments and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.